Have you ever felt like you are your own worst enemy? Good morning, Church of God, Church of the Living God, which is the pillar and ground of the truth. Good morning. This video is intended for the Church of God, those who are truly saved, born again, converted, new creatures in Christ Jesus. If you are not saved, this video has nothing to do with you. So, please get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James Version, commonly referred to as. Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, of what we will be looking at today. Follow me along. Check me out. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Check me out. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Check me out. Check me out. Check me out. What we will be speaking on today. Let us begin. And oh, <laughs> I can see now. Let us begin in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Verses 1 on to verse 7. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the <laughs> fear of God. Oh, there's that nasty little fear of God again. Because we're all going to have to give account of ourselves to God. Whether you're saved or whether you're lost. You're going to stand before God and give an account for yourself. But note that it says, cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and, lowercase, s, spirit. Hmm. Receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. I speak not this to condemn you. For I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and to live with you. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. For when we were come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings, within were fears. Nevertheless, God that comforteth those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus, and not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you, when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoiced the more. I like verse 6, Nevertheless God that comforteth those that are cast down. Those who are his, because those who are, who are not his, where do you go for comfort? You got all the candy shop of the world and all that Satan offers you for your comfort. And it doesn't satisfy, does it? Of course it doesn't, because it's from this world. It's of Satan himself. But see, our comfort cometh from the Lord and his means of comfort. But looking at verse 5. For when we were come into Macedonia, our flesh, our flesh had no rest. But we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings, within were fears. You know... Sometimes, brethren, sometimes, brethren, we could be our own worst enemies, can't we? Today in prayer, I, I prayed unto the Lord, it's like, you know, Lord, for every uh, shovel full of dirt that you fill, put back into that hole, I remove two shovelfuls out, sometimes it seems, right? Right, brethren? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 
Now, we've, we've discussed this before, but we're going to go through this today in great detail. Because sometimes, brethren, we are our, our own worst enemies. Whether we spot off at the mouth, whether we think things we shouldn't do, whether we eat things we shouldn't, whether we do things we shouldn't do, sometimes we are our worst enemies. You, because without our with fighting, our fightings, right? We have enough problems to deal with, with the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ, persecuting us, attacking us, some actually wanting us dead, wanting to sh silence us or get rid of us, right? With all those things that are without, within our fears, do we fear man or do we fear God? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 on to verse 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. This is for, if you're not saved, you're not the temple of God. Your God is Satan. He is your father, the little G God of this world. Okay? This video is for those who are truly saved, born again, converted, new creatures in Christ Jesus. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. And then very quickly, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. In your body, in your flesh, and in your spirit. There, there that is again. Your body and your spirit are soul. You know, a man is spirit, soul, body. But in your spirit and in your body. And you are bought with a price. Of course, what price is that? You are bought with a price. You, we, you do not belong to yourself. You do not belong to yourself. <laughs> First Peter chapter 1 verses 18 unto the close of the chapter. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. No sin in it. Never sin. God can't sin. The flesh which God was in, the Word was made flesh, okay? The Word was made flesh, okay? The actual flesh itself, that could sin, but the Word that was made flesh never sinned nor could sin, okay? Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Jesus Christ is our hope. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, capital S, unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the Word of God, <laughs> yeah, which liveth and abideth forever. That's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, no, it isn't. It's a lowercase w. If it were to be of a reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ as by the Word of God, it would be a capital W. Okay? Seven times in the authorized version of the Scriptures does the capital W-U appear. Uh, capital uh, double, ah, capital 
W appear, excuse me, seven times, okay? In the Bible, such as the NIV and those kind of perversions, only appear six times. Because they remove 1 John 5, 7. Talking about the Godhead, not the Trinity. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. That's the falleth, right? Yep. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So see, you are bought with a price. You are not your own. You are not your own. You, you, are, you do not have the liberty to do with your body, even with your mind, the things that we do. Sometimes do it. We, we don't have that liberty because we do not belong to ourselves. We are bought. Okay? We are bought. We are purchased. We are not redeemed yet, meaning the redemption of the purchased possession, when our Lord says, come up hither. Okay? But we're his purchased possession. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Okay? Alright? So, we do not have the liberty to do as we willy-nilly will with our bodies or with our minds or with our spirits or stuff like that. But more often we do. Looking back again in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God. Now we've gone over this before. We have. But like I said, we're going to go into this in great detail today. If any man. That includes, well, we all know about the lost, right? What happens when uh, the, the lost attack us, right? Because you got to remember. Everything that Paul went through, the beatings, the scourgings. We are Christ's representatives. We are his bones. We are his flesh. We are his body on earth. The lost and the devil, they can't hurt Jesus Christ, God our Father. God forbid. No, they can't hurt him. But you know what they can do? They can attack us. They can hurt us. Okay? And on that, go to Psalm 116. Okay? Psalm 116. They weren't trying merely just to whoop Paul when he went through all the horror for the name of the Lord. They weren't just trying to beat him. They were trying to beat what was within him, which is the Lord, out of him. You know, we are to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. We are to work out what the Lord has put into us, that is himself. So again, when Paul was being um, persecuted, beaten, flogged, that kind of stuff, they were beating Paul, but see, they were trying to beat Christ, whom Paul represented. Because Christ was in him. Okay? And plus, with that, uh, Psalm 116, verses 15 and 16. Okay, remember. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thine handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. Okay? Precious, it says there. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Precious. And vengeance belongs unto the Lord. He will repay. And you read in the book of Revelation how the Lord finally does recompense upon those the blood of the martyrs. The true martyrs of our Lord Jesus Christ. For those are our enemies who persecute the church of God, which is the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of truth. Um... You may be killing us, you might be hurting us, but see, you're fighting against the Lord. And that's a no-win situation for you. And also go to Zechariah, a couple of just one verse uh, references here. Zechariah chapter 2. Zechariah chapter 2. Just one verse. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 8. For thus sat the Lord of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. 
Now you might be saying, well, right there, it's like, well, that's just for the Jew, the Old Testament. Well, yeah. But see, we as Gentiles, we have been grafted into that tree of the Jew. We're not Jews, okay? But we have been grafted into that tree, okay? Uh, Matthew chapter 25, okay? Matthew chapter 25, okay? Just like I said, just another one verse thing. Where, because what, what we're doing looking at this is looking at the contrast of those who persecute us today, okay, who want to kill us, who want to silence us, who want to see us naked, destitute, or whatnot, um, you're not fighting against us, even though you are. You're actually fighting against the Lord. And they can't hurt the Lord, but they can hurt us. Okay? This is what you're going to This is what your recompense with an S is going to be. Okay? Matthew chapter 25, just one verse, verse 40. And this is in, uh, pertaining on to the kingdom of heaven. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. And then, like, like we have already mentioned, Acts chapter 9. Go to Acts chapter 9. Okay? Acts chapter 9, verses 3 on to verse 4, on to verse 5. And as he journeyed, Paul... He came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Hmm. See, man is not our enemy. Truly, man is not. Okay? Man is not. The spirit that is in these enemies of ours who we are to hate with perfect hatred. Perfect hatred is what? Loving what God loves and hating what God hates. That's perfect hatred. Okay? According to the scriptures, not according to our feelings. Okay? But these devils that attack us, it's not the flesh. It's that spirit that is within these people. Okay? And that is that spirit of Antichrist that is within these people. That is the spirit of the world. That is within these people. Okay? You gotta remember that. Okay? But nonetheless, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Saul's like, I wasn't persecuting you. If you did it unto least the one of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. Those who touch me, touch you, touch the apple of my eye. Precious is in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. See, you bear Jesus Christ in your daily living, okay? You bear him in your daily living. You are his witness, okay? Not that you're holding him up, but the way you live, the way you represent Christ, reflects on Christ, okay? And the lost world, and especially these Christians, they don't like that. They don't like that. Verse 5, and he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. You're not going to, you're not, you're, and I'm sure, you're not going to kill Jesus. You're not going to destroy him. They can destroy us, but after that, that's all they can do. See. So those are enemies who want to kill us, who want to run us over and beat us to death with a baseball bat, who want to see us homeless and naked, who slander us, who go to odd places to bring up slander and to lie. You're not fighting against me. You're not fighting against any of the brethren. You're fighting against the Lord. You truly are. You truly are. Okay? Because why? Why is that? <laughs> and how could you prove this otherwise without the scriptures? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, watch out for those people who speak against the scriptures, brethren. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 30. Just one verse. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. 
you know, Paul said that he was here to, uh, what is it, fill up the afflictions for the body of Christ, okay? Hence, that's what we are. That's what we do. Because why? For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones, okay? Body, flesh, bones, okay? We are the visible body of Christ, the church of the living God on earth today. These devils, they can't, they can't get to Jesus, and they never will, but they can get to us. Hence, that's why it's so severe, so cruel, so harsh on us sometimes. Because that spirit of Antichrist that is within them can't get to Jesus, but they can sure get to us. And 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 on the third, verse 13, okay? It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, dead with him, dead to, to that, we shall also live with him, and dead unto ourselves. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also will deny us. Every time we look at this, you have to mention this because of these heretics out there. Uh, not, this is not talking about salvation. Okay, If you're saved, born again, converted, you're seal on, sealed on to the day of redemption, once saved, always saved. Okay, If you're truly saved. Uh, he could deny a blessing. He could die, deny a mercy. He can deny a grace. He can deny many things. Salvation he won't or else he's a liar. Okay, So if we deny him, he can deny us, but it's not talking about salvation. It's talking about other things. Okay? If we believe not, yet he abided faithful, he cannot deny himself. Now, why can he not deny himself again? Okay, again, Ephesians 5, verse 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. So you're, you're attacking the church of God, which is the church of the living God. You're fighting against the Lord Jesus Christ. Woe, woe be unto you. But see, what happens? Now, we're to expect that. We're to expect that. But what happens when it's us to compound it? Hmm? What happens when it's us? Whether it's by willfully sinning, because all sin is willful, hmm? whether it's by disobeying, whether it's thinking of perversion, whether it's what you wanting to sit there and having a little pity party. Hmm? What happens when it's us that's doing it? Hmm? When a man's ways pleaseth the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Hmm. But what happens when you're your own tormentor? When you're doing contrary to the spirit of grace that has saved you, God's grace through your faith. Psalm 15. Psalm 15. We all do it. We all do it. We all beat up on ourselves. And we're going to address this. We are going to address this, so don't get ahead of me. Um, you know... Yeah, like I mentioned in one of the previous videos, you don't want me to love you like I love myself. How, what do you mean, Brad? Because I'm really, really hard on myself. <laughs> I really am. But when it comes to us merely acknowledging the true state of us as fallen man, fallen, redeemed man, oh, wretched man that I am, um, we're not telling the Lord anything he doesn't already know. Okay? Getting ahead of myself, and we're not going to do that, so... Psalm 15. Psalm 15. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly. How do you walk uprightly? According to the scriptures. Not according to your feelings that you can't, or not according to a spirit that you can't discern which is which because you don't have the scriptures to go to, but you got to go to a witch or, or a warlock or whatever. To, uh, no, 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 no. How do you walk uprightly? 
How shall, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way, but by taking heed thereto according to thy word? That's Beth, Psalm 119, Beth, okay? He that walketh uprightly, and worketh righteousness, and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. Trouble starter. Oh, I know a few of those trouble starters, you know, fire starters, eh? Yeah, yeah, I know quite a few of those. Here just to cause trouble, to cause dissension. Yeah, I know quite a few people like that. And they're Christians too. In whose eyes a vile person is condemned, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. Well, as for this, the, the Old Testament, Previous video, we just we addressed this, okay? He that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. Hmm, sweareth to your own hurt and changeth not. He that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. Hmm. He that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. Hmm. Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. Verses 32 and thir on to verse 36. Now therefore, hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my way. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Yeah, you have liberty to uh, join yourself with Catholicism for a day and defend the God of Catholicism for a day. Yes, you have that liberty. Yeah, sure. How is it going to benefit you? Oh, it makes you feel good, doesn't it? Yeah, because you've always done such from a little child, right? Yeah. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Now, of course, this is another dispensation where it was faith and works. But when you, and we all sin. We who are of the church of God, we all sin. Every single day, we sin. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Okay? But when it's habitual, when you're, you know, without even the least hesitation, but you're doing it habitual, habitually, um, you're... Do you love death? Well, I'll get out of here quicker. Okay, you'll get out of here quicker, but is the Lord going to be ashamed of you? Huh? Be not like the world? Hmm. Okay. Jeremiah. Now here, now, now, now here. Here, here's where we, here's where we're going to get to a little of the bites. Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 7. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house, and proclaim there this word, and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah. Enter in at these gates to worship, that, excuse me, enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus saith, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Amend your ways and your doings and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust ye not in lying words saying the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. 
Trust ye not in lying words. You know, because you're being attacked by enemies, because your circumstances around you are deplorable, does not give you the right as a purchased son or daughter of the living God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, just because all chades, just because all hell is breaking loose around you and you feel like chomping on the end of a bullet, that does not give you the right to do so. It doesn't give you the right. Why? Because you are not your own. You don't belong to yourself anymore, remember? You gave that up the moment the Lord saved you. But see, it's constantly like it talks about in Romans chapter 7. A war between the spirit and the flesh. And they're doing this all the day long, man. Right? Right? Just because you got the weight of the world on your shoulders does not give you the right as a son or daughter of the living God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. That doesn't give you the right to take matters into your own hands and find comfort within the things of the world. Or to find perverse comfort in you abasing yourself. And you got to beware about that one, dear brethren. Because... Sometimes your self-abasement is just a perverse, flipped version of self-exhortation. Oh, think about it. Think about it. Hmm. There was a rabbi, there was an imam, uh, a Muslim, and there was a Christian, one of the Church of the Living God. Okay? And the... Uh, the rabbi was like, Oh, Lord God, I am nothing, I am nothing. Please forgive me, Lord God, I am nothing, I am nothing, I am nothing. Then the Muslim did the same thing. He's like, Oh, Lord, I am nothing, I am nothing, I am nothing. Oh, please forgive me, I am nothing. Then one of the Church of the Living God, he goes and says, or she goes and says, Lord, what am I? I am nothing. Please have mercy upon me, a sinner who is chief. And the rabbi goes to the Muslim, hey, look who thinks he's nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if ye thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if ye oppress not the stranger. Now these are all works. This is a different dispensation. But the instruction in righteousness is, okay, we are to live according to the standards of this book. Okay? We are to live according to the standards of this book. And when all hell is going on around you, when you are being attacked, when the weight of the world is on your shoulders, when you think everything is about to collapse, it doesn't give you the right to cower and to go on to the world or to have a pity party. We all do it. Hi. Hi. I've done it recently myself. We all do it. But we got to remember we don't have that right. Why? Because we are not our own. We are not our own. Okay? If ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods. Look at that. To your hurt. Oh, boy. Yeah. 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 Like the Catholic God of the 25th. Yeah. Then will I cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Look at look 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 at verse six. If you oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods, little G, to your hurt. So 
Satan went up to Eve and was like, <laughs> you know, he said, yeah, if God said you don't eat every tree or fruit of the tree or whatnot, and Eve, and kind of like a whoa moment, it's like, he said not to eat anything, uh, eat from the tree of the garden of go uh, knowledge of good and evil, neither touch it. God never said, don't touch it. Satan says, eh, you're not going to die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, ye shall be, uh, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So wait a minute, Brad, what are you saying? Neither walk after other gods to your own hurt? What are you saying? That you know, when I'm having a pity party, or when I'm feeling sorry for myself, or dejecting, debasing myself, that can turn into a form of self-exhortation? You're saying that I'm uh, going after another god? Yeah, I am. I am. The god that you're looking at in the mirror, I've done it too. you got to be careful. Because... <laughs> this proves to us that we can't judge rightly unless we have the Spirit of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit that dwells within us, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. We as man, we don't know how to judge rightly. Man calls evil good and good evil. Look, 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 look out there, look out there, look out there sometime, okay? Look in the news, okay? Look in the news, all right? Look here on YouTube. Wow. Okay? We don't really truly know how to judge what is good and evil. God does. And if he lives in you, he's going to see. Again, you got these twits. Uh, Bible's not the word of God. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, those aren't. But they're ultimately attacking the scriptures. It's like, put down the scriptures. You don't need the scriptures. Scriptures are not the word of God. Oh, yeah. So then you're supposed to follow a spirit that you can't identify, but you got to go to someone else to identify it for you, huh? Yeah, good luck with that. Good luck with that. Yeah. Got to be careful. Got to be careful. Got to be careful. We've got to be very careful. Well, now go to Jeremiah chapter 25. Jeremiah chapter 25. Jeremiah chapter 25, verses 4 on to verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 25, verses 4 on to verse 7. And the Lord has sent unto you all his servants the prophets, rising early and sending them. But ye have not hearkened, nor inclined your ear to hear. They said, Turn ye again, now every one from his evil way, and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land that the Lord hath given unto you and to your fathers forever and ever. And go not after other gods to serve them, other God, little G, is you? Huh? You ever think about that one, huh? Well, I know it. I, God lives in me, and I, I can judge. I have semblance to judge what is good and evil. You shall be as God's only good and evil, huh? You're basically trusting your own self, your own heart, huh? <laughs> oh, boy. Watch out for that. Watch out for that. Oh, wow. Watch out for that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> and go not after other gods to serve them and to worship them and provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands and I will do you no hurt. Yet ye have not hearkened unto me, saith the Lord that ye might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. Like I said, sometimes it feels like, you know, the Lord is taking the dirt from the hole that we have dug, that I have dug myself, and putting a shovel full in, but with me and my actions, my thoughts, and some things that I say, it feels like I'm taking two out for his one that he's putting back in to fill up the hole. You know what I'm saying? You ever been there, brother, sister? Hmm? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, if, and if you haven't, you, 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 you say you're the sinless perfection person, so you don't need God because you're sinlessly perfect. The Lord rebuke you, you stinking rotten heretic. The Lord rebuke you, you scoundrel. Go away. Okay. But now, 
Go back. Okay, now before we do that, look at verse 7. Yet ye have not hearkened unto me, saith the Lord, that ye might provoke me to anger with the work of your own, with, with the works of your hands, to your own hurt. And if today in this dispensation, if it gets that bad, God will hand you over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. It gets bad enough. But this idea that you're doing things to provoke God to anger, to your own hurt. Thinking you have the liberty to do something that he doesn't hasn't done to you himself? You know, the forms of chastisement that comes from the Lord are many. You don't have the right to do it to yourself. And so many of us do, and think that it's God-pleasing. Now go back to Jeremiah chapter 7, and let's read verses 17 on to verse 20. Seest thou not what they do in the streets of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire. You reference this with uh, make people too more full, the child of hell, than yourselves, with these uh, Christians and the easy believism devils and all the rest of these weird devils here. And the women need their dough to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven, the Roman Catholic Mary, or that foul, disgusting witch from Bible is Mark of Beast. Yeah. And to pour out drink offerings onto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own? faces and God is not the author of confusion but Satan is you really think you're doing a good work for the Lord when you're debasing yourself in a manner that isn't pleasing to the Lord but you think you haven't come and right, blah, blah, rightfully so we're doing better you're you're alive church of the living God okay yes you're doing better than you deserve absolutely but, you know, if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, okay? We are to have self-judgment, yes. But we got to really be careful when it comes to self-chastisement. There are forms of that, like fasting and abstaining from things, which we're going to address. But um, when it gets into the realm of, you know, even physical damaging to yourself? Or killing yourself poison with poison? You know, drugs and toxic food and that kind of stuff? You're not at liberty to do that. You gotta be careful with that. You gotta really be careful with that. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place upon man, and upon beast, and upon the trees in the field, and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. Now see, we as the church of the living God, we are not, we do not get the wrath of God, but we sure can make God angry at us as the church of the living God. Not wrath. Oh, there's a difference between wrath and anger. There's a big difference between the two. Okay? There's a big difference between the two. Okay? <laughs> oh, wow, there's a really big difference between the two. Okay? Now, one second, brethren. Alrighty, sorry about that, sorry about that. Um, well, you might be saying to yourself, okay, well, well, Brad, I've sinned, and I have, I'm in every, I have every right to abase myself and whatnot, and it, it's, it's a totally different thing to go to the Lord, you know, Lord, I, I am vile. What, what, I'm sorry, please forgive me. But when you go beyond that, when you go beyond that, that's when you start getting into danger. That's when the line that could be crossed between, um, you know, putting yourself down, mortifying your flesh, as opposed to uplifting yourself by debasement. 
It's a very fine line. You got to be careful not to cross that. Because, because in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, uh, 16, chapter 6, just one verse, you got to remember, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Saved to the church of the living God, and you like to have a drink every once in a while? That's okay, but when, okay, okay uh, God doesn't have a problem with uh, you drinking alcohol. It's when you do it to excess, okay? Um, you as a church of the living God, you're depressed, you're going through some stuff, and you decide to get snuckered, huh? Woe is you, right? Or you just decide to smoke up a, a bunch of them cigarettes, right? Or you decide to binge eat, whatever it is. Yeah, all things are lawful for you, but not thing, but all things are not expedient. Yeah. <laughs> all things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. And see, we in our weakened state sometimes, when, and when you get to that uh, uh, place, you have to remember, some, and we're going to go through these things. We are not our own. We don't belong to ourselves. We are to go to the Lord. But see, Satan can come along. It's like, you know, you've been through a lot. It's, it's okay. Go ahead. Drink another uh, couple extra glasses of wine. Or puff a little bit more, a few cigarettes. Or hey, hey, we all have bad days. Go ahead and eat that whole cheesecake. Okay? It's really easy to do. God is not for it. First uh, Corinthians chapter ten, verses twenty under verse twenty-three. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice unto devils, and not to God. Deck the halls with balls of frolly, fra la 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 la. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the tables, table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. And when you go through a, a thing of self-abasement, and there, there are scriptural causes for self-abasement. Absolutely, absolutely. But you got to remember, there is a line that you got to beware of crossing. It's one thing to have scriptural, godly sorrow and humility and abasing yourself that the Lord may humble you, uh, may bring you up. Yes, but there is a point where you get to where you are exactly doing the opposite, exalting yourself about saying how bad you are. You got to watch out for that because that's a line that is easily crossed by so many of the brethren. You gotta watch out for that. Okay, and on that, okay, let's look at some examples of this. Okay, Job. Job chapter 40. Job chapter 40. And the thing to remember about Job, Job had an impeccable <laughs> reference, if you will. Okay, Job had probably the best reference or someone speaking on his behalf than anyone could have. What was that? Uh, uh, Job chapter 1, verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? That's what God said of Job. Okay? Job had a glowing recommendation from the Lord. Twice our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, our God, said this of Job. Twice! Job was what? A perfect and upright man, one that feared God and eschewed evil. Okay? But in Job chapter 40, Job chapter 40, okay? Verses 1 on verse 7. Now, 
Job is allowed to go through some sufferings. Satan is allowed to take everything away from him, except his wife and his three friends, okay? And his three friends accuse him of doing wrong. So, well, why else would this be happening to, you, happening to you unless you did something against God? And Job didn't do anything to God. He didn't sin. I mean, and you read Job 1 and 2, and you'll see the answer to that, that he didn't. But God allowed it to happen. But what happened is Job's three friends, like these devils, nod, 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 nod. That war between spirit and flesh Okay, and what happened eventually was Job chose to defend himself and in his defending his, himself and talking about what he had done in defense of himself, he actually exalted himself. He le it led to a warped, perverse, twisted sort of pride. He was suffering. He was going through a whole lot of stuff. And his three friends who opened up their big mouths and just made it worse, wasn't their fault? Okay, Job wasn't having a gun pointed to his head to do anything like that. No, he had the free will to do so. But what he did was he ended up exalting himself. If I, you know, if I've done this, if I've done this, it's like, I'm righteous, I'm righteous, I'm righteous, I'm righteous. And he was. But see, in his suffering, he ended up exalting himself, okay? In a form of pride in his suffering, okay? And of course, Job answers him out of the whirlwind and says, Who is this who darkeneth counsel with words without knowledge? Then you read in Job chapter 40, verses 1 on to verse 7, okay? Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? It's like, who are you? It's like, why am I, well, you know, look, I've, I'm, I've done this, I've done this. I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm not like other men, okay? I, I've done this, this, this. I've, I'm, I'm really good. Why is this happening to me? He exalted himself in his suffering, okay? And the Lord didn't like that. Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth God, let him answer it. Look at what Job says. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. Just a couple chapters before, he was going off the laundry list of how good he was, which was true. But see, in the context of his suffering, God didn't like that. Obviously not. But Job says, Behold, I am vile, and what shall I answer thee? I will lay mine hand upon my mouth. Job realized when you got the Lord, our Father, asking you well over 150 questions that you can't answer. Where were you? What are you? What did you do? Who do you think you are? Those kinds of questions, okay? Once have I spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no, no further. Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind and said, It's okay. You messed up. It's all right. Don't, don't be too hard on yourself. No, what did he do? He doesn't even say that. What does the Lord say? Ooh, scary right here. See, when we give an account of ourselves to God, it's like, ah, oh, Lord, I shouldn't have done that. The judgment seat of Christ, you think the Lord's going to be there? That, that's okay. That's okay. You, you made me look bad. You insulted me by sinning and yada, yada, yada. Uh, but that's okay. No, no, judgment seat of Christ. Gird up thy loins now like a man. Tough guy. <laughs> I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. Just chill thinking about that. Yeah. Gird up thy loins now like a man. You think you're a tough guy, huh? You think you're a man. Huh? You're a manly man, huh? Yeah. Yeah. How are you going to be when the Lord's uh, Lord is asking you, you know, what you do? Give an account of yourself. <laughs> Gird up thy loins now like a man. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. Oh, and it's just going to be a big old lovey-dovey sugary bro hug fest in heaven. You, you're crazy. You got rocks in your brains. You got rocks for brains. Excuse me. Okay? 
And also, too, now see, context. Job was not exalting himself here as he was in, um, uh, uh, yeah, where was that? And that, that's what, Job chapter 30? Oh, Job chapter 31. Okay? In Job chapter from what? Uh, 29 on to verse 31, you see from constant nine and picking from the enemy. Job chose to, in his uh, cast down state, he made the choice. He started to lift up himself above God. That God had no right to do such a thing unto him. And hey, we already saw God said of Job, he was perfect and upright. But Job, in his self-exaltation of himself, in his suffering, was saying, I am too good for God to even do this to me. Hence, who is this who, who, is this who darkened the counsel with words without knowledge? See, in, our, in the weakest state, that self-abasement that we have can be turned into a form of self-exhortation. you got to watch out for that. And then uh, Job chapter 42, of course, verses 1 on to verse 6. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not, things too wonderful for me which I knew not. Now see, he's acknowledging what God already knows. Okay, this is not self, this is not pride. He's just like, Lord, I'm a worthless, wretched sinner. I, I can't do good even if I was held at gunpoint. I, I, I'm no good. You're not exalting yourself. You are acknowledging what the scriptures already say of you as fallen man. Okay, that's not self-exalting. But it's like when you get to the point where it's like, well, Lord, I'm going through all this stuff, but look at what I've done for you. I've done this, 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 this. And look, I, I, I've helped the old, I've, I've given money. I've helped these people. People have cried on me. I've done all this stuff. And why are you letting me, blah, blah, blah. Ah, ah. And then it gets to, it's like, well, I'm saved. I, I haven't hurt anybody. And yet this person's on me. This person's on me. I got these people here. And it's like, oh, whoa, oh you got to be careful. You got to be careful. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. He hates himself. And in the context when we are aware of what God is, who he is, what he has done for us, and his righteous judgment that is upon us for what we have done for him, done against him, excuse me, done against him, um, that's where anyone who is truly saved, saved will come, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes, Okay. And see, you got these people who just say, oh, it's the love of God, it's the love of God. They're exalting themselves. There's no, there's no humility in there. The humility they have is false because they, they were never broken of themselves. Job was utterly broken. This is not pride. This was not pride. Not at all. He hated himself because he's, he, he uttered on things, uh, things too wonderful me with, for me, which I knew not. God's ways are greater than our ways. Okay? But what? A, but here's another example of the, something like this. Go to Exodus chapter 4. Okay? Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. God chose Moses. And God appeared unto Moses and said, you're going to the children of Israel. Speak what I speak unto them. Speak what I speak unto you unto them. You're going to go, and through you, I'm going to let the children of Israel go. I'm going to do these signs and wonders. Okay. 
So the Lord's going to use Job. All right, excuse me. The Lord's going to use Moses. <laughs> excuse me. Okay. But Moses here, and many can sympathize because um, Moses' self-confidence was crushed. But check this out. Check this out. The Lord has said to him clearly, I'm going to be with you. That ought to be enough. The Lord is with us. What can man do unto us? You know? The Lord is with us. What can man do unto us? And the fact that God lives within us as the church of the living God, that ought to be enough for us. It ought to be. But sometimes, unfortunately, when we get into our little pity parties, when we start feeling sorry for ourselves, when we, in our dejected state, start uplifting ourselves in pride, I, hey, I've done it, man! Oh, and you want to talk about some chastening. Oh. It, it, you know, when it rains, it pours. <laughs> yeah. But Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 on to verse 17. And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. Lord said originally, you're going. Shut up. You're going. I'm going to be with you. That's all you need to know. Verse 11. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh thee that maketh the dumb or deaf or the seen or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go. And I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. Okay. It's like, all right, Lord. But what does Moses do? Moses. And he said, O oh my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. What is he saying there? Send someone else, just not me. When the Lord says in verse 11 and 12, I'm going to be with you, and Moses is still clinging to, oh, send someone else, not me. And the Lord's like, oh, don't worry. Come here. Come here. Let me get you. You're okay. No, you're okay. Love yourself, Moses. Just love yourself. You know, like Butch Joker, jo uh, Joyce Myers, you know, who did that. You know, just give yourself a hug and love yourself. Oh, shut up. What did the Lord say? He, obviously, this is Moses, right? Who he, he was going to kill because he hadn't circumcised his children, so his wife had to circumcise his children. And she said, Thou art a bloody husband unto me because of the circumcision. Mm -hmm. So the Lord was like, and the Lord was like, Oh, that's okay, Moses. No. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him, and put my words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth, and with his mouth, and will teach you what ye shall do. In other words, uh, you shut your mouth right now, Moses. You're going whether you want to or not. Okay, you're going to give me a half? Fine. And here, I'll bring your brother Aaron, who's going to be nothing but a pain in your rear end. And, of course, the Aaronic priesthood. Amen. But, you know, the golden calf. Oh, the people gave me the gold, and all of a sudden, whoop, <laughs> comes out here. This calf just came out. Oh, vey. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay? Yeah. 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 See, Lord is going to send Moses no matter what. But Moses kind of, kind of, it's like, oh, eh. and it got, made the Lord angry with Moses. It's like, you're going, whether you like it or not. I'll give you Aaron, okay? Since you're going to be a little crybaby about it, here, I'll give you Aaron, okay? You're going, okay? Verse 15, And thou shalt speak unto him, and put my words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth, and will teach you what ye shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people. 
since he was complaining about how bad of a speaker he was. And he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him instead of God. And thou shalt take this rod in thine hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. You're going whether you want it or not. And it was originally our Lord intended for Moses just to go. And the Lord knew what Moses was going to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. But because of that, he was like, okay, fine. Okay, here. Bring Aaron in. See? Okay? And this we have to remember. See, the Lord said unto Moses, I'm going to be with you. That ought to have been enough. Why, why is it? with us sometimes, brethren. The fact that the Lord Jesus Christ, God who is our Father, dwells within us. We know to say, we have all and abound. We wants are many, needs are few. Right. But sometimes when we are in our weakest state, having self-pity on our pity parties, it's as if we sometimes believe that the Lord within us is not sufficient. God forbid. But sometimes we get like that, don't we? Don't we? Don't tell me you don't. You lie. You lie and your breath stink. Okay? I can smell it all the way over here, over this plastic camera, and even here in Illinois. Even if you're in another country. I can. You say that you don't get like that ever? You lie and your breath stink. For this, though, let us remember this. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. You know, next time you're feeling sorry for yourself and you got the weight of the world on your shoulders and all your circumstances are compounding against you and you feel like taking matters into your own hands to find some relief, whether it's getting drunk, whether it's smoking cigarettes, whether it's taking drugs, whether it's overeating, whether it's looking at or watching a, some kind of movie or playing a video game or whatever to, to distract yourself. Those are worldly things. Those are uh, That wisdom doesn't descend from above, but it's earthly, sensual, sensual, devilish. Here's some encouragement for you. Romans chapter 8, verses 31 on verse 39. Okay? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Time out. Always got to mention this because of the wicked Calvinists. Okay. Today we are the elect because we have gone to the way of the cross according to God's desire okay his way not our way not the way of where you boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way no we go we went to the lord on his terms broken contrite and in fear of him called upon the name of the lord and he saved us lord willing okay we are part of the elect because the lord elected the cross okay it's not the calvinistic elect without any say non-elect without any say it's not like that okay Okay, just to clarify that. Who is he that condemneth? The accuser of the brethren. It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? This pertains, okay, this is only for saved people. Okay, the love of Christ is only for those who are saved. The love of God is the cross. And you have to go there on his terms, not your own. You don't boot the door out of the way. And Christ Jesus is the way. He is the door, okay? The way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. He is the door. You don't boot the door out of the way and then climb up some other way. You go his way, okay? You go his way. Hence, when you go according to his ways and he save you, the love of God is for you, okay? Even when you mess up even when you might be that close to being handed over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the Spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Okay, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Okay? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, 
what you're going through at home, or distress, the enemies that attack you, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep as a slaughter. Think about this. Now, you're having a little pity party about everything, what you're going And hey, I don't know what you may or may not be going through. I don't know. But see, are your problems that big and God is this big? Come on now. Well, Brad, but yeah. Think about it. When you are letting your circumstances, when you are letting things justly so, when you are letting them become this big, and yet, you know, oh well, like kind of like with the Martha and the Mary thing, where it's like, Lord, had you had been here, my brother had not died. It's like, well, I am the resurrection and the life. It's like, your brother will live again. And she's like, I know he'll live again in the resurrection. Then the Lord's like, hey! Hello! <laughs> and then he brings uh, Lazarus back to life. Okay? We know these things. Yes, we do. But you got to be careful about letting the, your circumstances and things that you are suffering, even if it's a so, you know, boom, self inflicted, you got to be careful about magnifying your problems, hence, magnifying yourself above the Lord. You got to be careful about that, man. Woman, you really got to watch out for that. God, when we looked at that in Job, God doesn't care for that. God doesn't care for that. Okay? You are not at liberty to do so because you are not your own. Okay? Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Who has the power of death? Satan. How so? God can kill. Yes, he can. But see, the power of death. See, you're not saved. The power of death is you're afraid to die because you don't know where you're going. You're afraid to die because you, you think, well, this is the only thing I got. This is my best life now, so I better make the best of it. Uh, no. That's the power of death that Satan has. So live it up in sin because this is your best life now. When in reality, you have eternal life, dear friend. You really do. You do. Where is that eternal life going to be spent? With the Lord Jesus Christ or in the lake of fire? Okay? We do have eternal life. Yes. Yes! But is it going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ? Or is it going to be in hell burning within the lake of fire? And see, that power of death that Satan has is, hey, this is this is all you got. You die. Remember, we came from a sniveling piece of snot. Your, your, your uncle was a monkey, okay, <laughs> or something like that. So this is your best life. Make the best of it. Hey, live it up. Let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Keeping people in sin and keeping people away from God. That's the power of death that Satan has, okay? But see, we who are saved, we know that we're, we're going to have eternal life with our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we know that you, who are lost, you who are fake, you're also going to have eternal life in hell. Hence, knowing the terror, terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Okay? For I am persuaded, verse 38, in uh, Romans chapter 8. Did I tell you? Well, it's obvious, verses 31 on to verse 39, but let's continue. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, neither height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us who are saved from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you're not saved, this doesn't apply to you. <laughs> as simple as that. Simple as that. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 17 on to verse 19. Thou therefore, gird up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. 
Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. Confound thee before them. Not truly trusting on the Lord, magnifying your problems, and lightly esteeming the Lord. Um, making a mountain of your problems and making a little anthill of God. It's easy to do. It's easy to do when everybody seems to be against you. When people who you thought were, weren't, aren't. Then you were shame being like, oh wow, I can't believe that I fell for that. Or, oh wow, I can't believe that I, oh, you know. You got to be careful, beloved, about making your problems bigger than the Lord. And hey, you might be saying, well, what if the problems are meant that way so I can go, so you can turn to the Lord again, right? 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 Yeah, hello. Okay. For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city and an iron pillar and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, and against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. And they shall fight against thee. But they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. And we read in Romans chapter 8, you know, are you walking uprightly according to the scripture? That's something you need to consider. If you are, then you're suffering justly, praise the Lord. If you're not and you're suffering consequences of your actions and getting chastisement, praise the Lord. That means that the Lord loves you and he deals with you as a son or as a daughter. But see, when you start making, when you start making them problems, a big old mountain that not even God can traverse, oh wow. Or you have it, Kind of, well, I know that God, that we have the victory, but what about presently, right? Watch out for that. In that kind of state, that's when you can make some of the worst decisions you'll ever want to make as one of the church of the living God. I know. Been there. Okay? I've been there. <clears throat> And let's look at a really good uh, kick at this. Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Kick at our pride. Kick at our pride. Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 6 on to verse 8. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them. Neither be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns be with thee, and they choke the word, that day it become unfruitful, right? Briars and thorns, things of the world, your enemies, yeah. But woe be unto us when that enemy is ourself. Which usually is the case sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee. And thou dost dwell among scorpions, we sure do. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, Hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. Don't be like them in their little pity parties. And go to all the instruments that uh, Satan gives to distract you from dealing with the white elephant in the living room or the monkey in the wrench, the fly in the ointment See, Deal with it. Don't make excuses. Because you do not belong to yourself. You are bought with a price. You are not your own anymore. Remember? You do remember, right? I hope so. If not, this is a reminder. And now go to Jeremiah chapter 12. Jeremiah chapter 12. 
Here's an example of someone having a pity party. Jeremiah chapter 12, verses 1 and verse 6. Righteous art thou, O Lord, when I plead with thee. Yet let me talk with thee of thy judgments. Oh boy, wherefore doth the way of the wicked prosper? And they have been set in slippery places. They're going to fall eventually. It may seem that the wicked is doing well today, doesn't it? But when you go into the sanctuary of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, that is in prayer with him, and in the scriptures, you realize that their ways are slippery, that they, that in the end, they, it's not going to profit them. You might be doing well right now today there, buddy boy. You might have 40,000 reasons to smile. You might have your own kingdom on your precious lands or whatever. You might have the finest house. You might have the finest car. You might have good clothes. You might be able to, uh, <laughs> as if you uh, can coerce God to do things for you. Uh, yeah, it's not going to last. It's not going to bring, it's not going to carry you along into eternity, dear boy, dear woman. Got to be careful, okay? Wherefore doth the way of the wicked prosper? Wherefore are they all happy that deal very treacherously? Thou hast planted them, yea, and they have taken root. They grow, yea, they bring forth fruit. Thou art near in their mouth and far from their reins. Oh, wow, man, right? Well, I'm a Christian. You live like a devil. I'm a Christian. Yeah, but you've set yourself up as a pope. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. But thou, O Lord, knowest me. Thou hast seen me and tried me. Uh, thou hast seen me and tried mine heart toward thee. Excuse me. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter and prepare them for the day of slaughter. How long shall the land mourn and the herbs of every field wither for the wickedness of them that dwell therein? The beasts are consumed, and the birds, because they said, he shall not see our last end. And this is, of course, Jeremiah lamenting because he's being attacked and stuff like that, doing what the Lord told him to do. The weight of the world was on his shoulders. No one wanted to hear what he had to say. Everyone hated him. Very, uh, he had Baruch, you know, like Paul. <laughs> Only Luke was with me. At the end of things, it seems like you only got one. And if you only got one, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, our Lord was like, well, hey, it's okay, Jeremiah. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. It's fine. What does our Lord do? Check this out. <laughs> if thou hast run with the footmen, and they have wearied thee, then how can it stop contend with horses? Uh, you, you, you think that's something? Uh, you think you think you're going so that that's nothing. You wait until you start getting into the deeper things that I have that I want you to speak about. Then, then okay, you you think these little trifles here? This is really getting to you to that point now? Oh, you just wait till we go a little further in this wall, boy. And if the land of peace wherein thou trustest, they wearied thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of Jordan? Yeah, you roll that verse around in your head a little bit. When you feel like jumping off of a cliff because you encounter a little persecution. Or you feel like uh, smoking a joint or getting drunk or looking at some satanic worldly device to distract you. To distract you. Yeah, you, yeah. Wait, you, you think that's, <laughs> hey, nothing. You wait to, you, you keep going on this path that I want you to go on, uh, having me following you and not you doing it yourself. You just wait. See, that's why the Lord affirmed both Jeremiah and Ezekiel in the way he did. Because Jeremiah and Ezekiel, especially Jeremiah, which is my favorite book in all scripture. And Jeremiah is very applicable in many ways for instruction and in righteousness today. No one wanted to hear what Jeremiah was saying. No one wanted to hear it. He was to many, 
No one wants to hear what we want to say, Church of the Living God. We're heretics. We're lost because we speak against Roman Catholicism's one of their two holy days. We're lost because we do that. We're lost because we, we speak against uh, unity with the lost world and uh, uh, those who are just Christians, right? We're lost. We're lost. We're, we're troublemakers because we're not following the ways of the King James Bible believing Christians or stuff like that, right? Yeah. Nobody wants to hear the truth nowadays. And you think this is something. Huh? Verse 6. For even thy brethren and the house of thy father, even they have dealt treacherously with thee. Yea, they have called the multitude after thee, after thee. Believe them not, though they speak fair words unto thee. And oh, that's something for coming, uh, uh, doing this with the Lord today. That's something that uh, for myself, you know. I'm, I'm gullible. I'm gullible. And I give chances to those people I should never have given chances to. And it's cost me. They say they're my brother or my sister, and it's like, okay, and I give them a chance, and it's like, <laughs> whoa, 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 you, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, you, you saw what? Oh, wow, oh, wow, man, yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, now skipping ahead a little here, uh, verses 14 on to the close of the chapter. Check this out. Thus saith the Lord against all mine evil neighbors, that toucheth the inheritance which I have caused my people Israel to inherit. Behold, again, those who touch you touch the apple of his eye, okay? Behold, I will pluck them out of their land and pluck out the house of Judah from among them. And it shall come to pass, after that I have plucked them out, I will return and have compassion on them, and will bring them again, every man to his heritage, and every man to his land. Yeah, uh, though he cause grief, won't last forever, Church of God. Uh, what is it? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And it shall come to pass, after that I have plucked them out, I will return and have compassion on them, and will bring them again, every man to his heritage and every man to his land. And it shall come to pass, if they will diligently learn the ways of my people to swear by my name, the Lord liveth, as they taught my people to swear by Baal, then shall they be built in the midst of my people. But if they will not obey, I will utterly pluck up and destroy that nation, saith the Lord. And I, it's like, okay, all right. We've got to beware, brethren, of, you know, the Lord is the one who chastens us. And we can, you know, through prayer, through fasting, through abstaining, through things, yes, we can do that as a form of chastisement. But you've got to be very careful, very careful. Because, like I said, it can lead into a source of self-exhortation, of a, f a form of pride, your little pity party, okay? And like, I, like I've talked with you before, it's a good thing to remember from whence you came. Absolutely. I think a whole lot of these King James Bible-believing Christians need to remember from whence they came if they actually came at all, okay? I think it's important that a lot of them do that. But it's important to remember from where we came, not to forget that. But to dwell in the past like the enemy wants us to do, <laughs> that's no, no. That could be destructive. And the destruction is usually us shooting ourselves in the foot. But then again, then perfect example. You get the Catholic with their penance. Their penance and their self-flagellation. Like, what is it? In, what was it in Venezuela or Peru or one of those countries? where they, the Catholics will go through the streets wearing their cowl things or whatever but, and have like the back exposed and they'll take a small scourge of uh, whip or like cords or something and foom, foom, whip themselves. You, Ignatius of Loyola did that to himself. He 
butchered himself by whipping himself with a cat of nine tails, basically. That's uh, a whip that has nine things on it, that has little blades on it, and you whip yourself with it. Okay, Catholics do that. They're penance. Uh, Martin Luther, the heretic that he was, you know, crawling around on the floor with his, you know, kissing concrete, okay, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah, that's... See, that's a form of self-exhortation. And that, what the Catholic does, you know, self you know, whipping themselves, uh, yeah, that's satanic. That's wicked. That's devilish. That is not according to Scripture. But you know what they do? They go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9 to try to justify self-flagellation, okay? Penance, the Catholic penance. They will come to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 on to verse 27, and take it out of context like the Catholics like to do things. Know ye not that they which run in a race, uh, verses 24 on to verse 27 in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a, a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. So what better more than to flagellate yourself, right? As a form of penance. Yeah. Yeah. Beat yourself. Mutilate yourself to show, that, show God that you're sorry. Oh, brother, sister. Be careful with that one. Yeah, be very careful with that one. Yeah. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. And here's where they twist it. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. And the Catholic will come to that and try to justify, keep under your body. So whip it with a cat of nine tails. Uh, crawl around on concrete and sleep on concrete. Uh, wear that rough garment to deceive. Sleep on a bed made of nails. <laughs> Do all these physical things in the flesh to cause your flesh to be in pain. Yeah. Yeah. That's not what that is talking about. You want to know what this is talking about? You want to know what this is talking about? This is specifically talking about Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 on to verse 7. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and, uh, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which time in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. See what First uh, Corinthians nine verses twenty seven on the ver uh, twenty four on the verse twenty seven is talking about is mortifying, and they say well the Catholics like yeah mortify beat yourself. Um, none of the apostles ever taught that you self mutilate yourself. No, because if you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you don't mutilate yourself. You don't, you, no, you, you don't do that. It's not in scripture, okay? Not at all for us today in this dispensation, okay? You, you don't do it like that. Why do those Catholics and those like that like to do their self-flagellations and stuff like that? Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. And you might make the argument, well, Brad, it makes me feel better. Uh, the Lord's the one that's supposed to make you feel better. The Lord is the one who is the God of all comfort. You don't get, if you're getting comfort and causing yourself physical pain, uh, you, you got some problems. You got some problems. Okay? You got some problems. And you need to go to the Lord to figure that stuff out. Okay? That's, that's not healthy. That's a problem, okay? But Isaiah chapter 58, Isaiah chapter 58, verses 1 on to verse 7. 
Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinance of their God. But yet they did. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Verse 3, look at this. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? By whipping yourself, right? No. By denying your things that the flesh, denying your soul the things that your flesh cries after. That's far more difficult to do than just uh, taking the satanic way out and mutilating yourself. Okay? Try denying your flesh. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. And right away, for this, you go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. God does not, God has not called you to take matters into your own hands and to mutilate your own self or, you know, to cut yourself or anything like that. It's, it's like the thing with the tattoos, you know. You, you shall print no marks upon you, nor make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. I am the Lord. And people who want to justify tattoos, well, I'm not getting a name, uh, I'm not getting a tattoo for the name of the dead. There's a semicolon or a colon in between that. You're not supposed to get a tattoo. But if Jesuit James White says it's okay to get a tattoo. Yeah, Jesuit James White, not saved, lost. Yeah, but Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 on to verse 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? See, we've done many religious things, right? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done wonder many wonderful works. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Back in Matthew chapter 7, verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Back to Isaiah chapter 58, verse 4. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate. Well, I've I've whooped myself a hundred times today. What'd you do? Oh, I I I had a I had this penance to do that was so severe. Uh, you know what, what? What have you done? See, it becomes a source of pride. It becomes a source of what strife and debate. One second, brethren. Sorry about that, brethren. Yes, behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast. Ye shall not fast. As ye do this day, to make your voice heard, to be heard on high. Hold your place here. Go now to Matthew chapter 6. 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 We begin with verses 16 on to verse 18. Moreover, when ye fast, and fasting, there are several uh, ways to fast and reasons to fast. We'll look briefly at some of these. Not all of them, but we'll look briefly at some of these. Fasting is one way to um, afflict yourself, okay? To fast, okay? That's one way to afflict yourself. Self-flagellation, mutilating yourself like that and stuff. Uh, no, no, that's, that's satanic. That's, and God doesn't call for that. Okay, Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 on to verse 18. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have the, their reward. 
Yeah, behold, ye fast for strife and debate. Well, I'm I'm afflicting my soul today. I I you know I've hurt myself today. You know because I'm so guilty. I'm so I'm I'm such a wretched person. Look at what I've done to myself to prove uh, how worthy or uh, unworthy I am. Look at how humble I am because I've done this to my. See, that's pride. That's pride. Lifting yourself up in your misery like that. Gotta be careful with that. But thou, verse 17, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Back in Isaiah chapter 58, verse 4, Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the hand of the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice heard to be heard on high. And that's a reason to fast. One of them, yes it is, to have your voice heard on high. But there are charismatics that pervert and twist that. We'll get to that in a moment. But now, uh, go back to Matthew chapter 6. Let's read verses 1 under verse 8 now. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men, to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Mark the messenger. I recently came across this channel, Mark the Messenger, a Hamite. Um, I don't know if he's black Hebrew light, Hebrew Israelite. I, I guess he is, but I'm not going to say. But Mark the Messenger, a young Hebrew, a uh, young um, uh, Hamite. I, I think he's probably putting himself off as a black Hebrew Israelite. I don't know. But I, I checked out his channel and it's like, oh, okay, okay. He actually was quoting the scriptures. He was, the King James Version. But in his community thing, somebody gave him, donated to him a hundred bucks. And he put that person's name in his community thing. And I'm like, okay, Mark the Messenger, if you were truly someone of the Church of the Living God, you would know better not to exalt, put, uh, magnify someone who gave you a hundred bucks. Praise the Lord, they gave you a hundred bucks. Uh, why do I know about it? Why does everybody know? Uh, see, see, when, when it comes to uh, giving, um, you, you need to shut up about that. Because the minute you say, well, brother so-and-so gave me $150 or brother so-and-so gave me $250, praise the Lord. Praise him. Mwah, mwah. Praise the Lord. But you don't go and boast that uh, on your YouTube channel and the community thing. And you don't go around boasting, well, brother so-and-so gave... No, 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 no. Well, you don't. Well, I've given... <laughs> I've given you thousands of dollars. Oh, oh, oh. Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. You got to be careful with that. Oh, you got to be careful with that. When, you, when your giving becomes a source of pride. Oh, you got to. And hey, not that the gifts are a godsend, a blessing. Yes, but you have to. Shh, hush, hush. That Mark the Messenger. Like I said, some guy gave him a hundred bucks and he's. He's displaying it for everybody. It's like, wow, okay. You call yourself Mark the Messenger, God speaking to you, and yet you do a stupid thing like that? Then, no. No. Let's continue. <laughs> Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. How can ye believe who receive honor from men and not the honor that cometh from God only? How can ye believe? But when thou doest thine alms, <laughs> let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. There are four people who will know about giving. The Lord. The devil yourself, and the individual or individuals to whom you are giving. 
and there is where it ought to remain. The minute you start broadcasting, um, you're in danger. Be aware of that. That thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions. Vain repetition. Hail Mary, full of grapes, blessed be the fruit of the uh, loom. Hail Mary, full of grapes, blessed be the fruit of the loom. Those are repetitious prayer, uh, prayers. You every day asking for the Lord's mercy and grace and for provision, that's not repetitious prayer. The repetitious prayer that he is condemning are the prayers of Catholicism. The prayers of the Charismatics. Repetition. Hail Mary, full of grapes. Blessed be the fruit of the womb, or the loom. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the repetitious prayers. Some of the Jewish prayers in the synagogues are like that too. Repetitious prayer. Okay? A lot of them are actually. Those are the prayers that are being rebuked there. Not the everyday. Lord, can you give me something to eat today? Lord, today, can you pay my bills? I don't know how we're going to pay my bills. <laughs> yeah, we don't know. But please, can you provide for us? Please. That's not repetitious prayer that is being condemned here. Religious. Catholic. <laughs> uh, Kabbalistic Judaism prayers. Those are the ones that are being rebuked there, okay? But when ye pray, use not vain repetition as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Okay? Back to Isaiah chapter 58, picking up in verse 4 again. Behold, he fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. And also, you know, with the self-flagellation, injuring yourself, doing something physically to your body as a means of showing penance. Fasting is a way, yes, and um, denying your flesh, yes. But when you do that, you're supposed to shut up about it. But, you know, there are examples. There's an example here in Scripture of those who did cut themselves and to in order to get the attention of their God. 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. Verses 25 on to verse 29. Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Elijah is like, okay, we both get a bull. And both we're both going to dress him up. And the God that answers by fire, he is the Lord. And they're like, okay. And he's like, you guys go ahead first. Because the way I the, the way I got to do it is the proper way, and it's going to take some time. You guys just go ahead and do your thing. So the prophets of Baal went and did their thing and cut up the bull and whatnot. And we pick up here in 1 Kings chapter 18, 25 on to verse 29. Where are you, Brett? Okay. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, and dress it first, for ye are many. And call in the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us! But there was no voice nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. Hmm. Sounds very reminiscent to a lot of the charismatic nonsense that I have seen. Okay? And it came to pass at noon, you wicked charismatics. Yeah, God appeared to you, huh? You're crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you got blah, 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 to get God's attention. Yeah. So you can consume it on your lusts. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit more on that in a little bit. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry loud, for he is a God. 
Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awaked. Yeah. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after the manner, after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. Mm, prophets of Baal, the Baal like religion, Baal worshippers. Uh, modern Roman Catholicism. Okay? Mm. So they cut themselves with knives and with lancets. What's a lancet? Oh, cat of nine tails. And it came to pass, when midday was past, that they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded So the prophets of Baal, cutting themselves, bloody, to get their God's attention. And nothing happened. And also, too, this has to be addressed. Uh, Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. When you are doing things, see, to afflict your soul, to afflict yourself um, in signs of mourning, fasting, abstaining from pleasurable things of the flesh, that is the is a scriptural type of fast and also as we're going to finish here in is uh, Isaiah chapter 58 to do contrary to the flesh by doing good versus doing evil serving yourself serving others see okay okay but keep this in mind when you want to take uh, more upon yourselves than what is required in scripture remember this the prophets of Baal cut themselves, bloodied themselves. Mark chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 5. And they came over onto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. This was a devil-possessed man. And what we're about to see here, I saw personally in my own mother. And I've also seen it in others. Devil possession. Who had his dwelling among the tombs, amongst the dead. Hmm. And no man could tame him. No man could bind him. No, not with chains. Someone who is among the tombs, uh, among the dead. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Dead in their trespasses and sins. And you can't bind them with chains. You, you cast your pearls before swine with some of these people. Can't bind them. Right? Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains. And the chains had been plucked asunder by him. Didn't want to hear him. Broke him off. Okay? And the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. Wild man. Yeah. And always... Night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Self-mutilation. I, when I was a kid, yeah, I cut myself too. I even got a scar right here where I, in a drunken stupor, like that. There's this disgusting thrash metal band called Slayer here in America. You've probably heard of them, unfortunately. Um, one of the things that the disciples of this disgusting thrash band does, um, and I did this as a lost man, lost little boy myself, they'll take razors and carve into their arm, Slayer. And then, uh, in one of their albums, they had it where somebody over a sink had carved Slayer into their arm. Slayer. Satan laughing as, ye, as you eternally rot. Okay? But yeah. Carving the name Slayer of a heavy metal thrash band, putting uh, vodka on it and lighting it on fire, to scar it. Yeah. And Catholics, you know, with their self flagellations like uh, Ignatius of Loyola did. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Be careful. Be careful of you doing things that are contrary to Scripture when it comes to um, repentance, to afflicting yourself because of mourning. Be careful. Be careful. Be very careful. Don't go to the devil for comfort. And do not go to the devil to show mourning unto the Lord when you have it prescribed for you in the scriptures on how to do it. Okay? And of course, Micah chapter 6. And, and, and right here. Micah chapter 6. Here is, and this is not really talked about much in the New Testament at all because it doesn't need to be. We of the church of the living God, we have sorrow, we fast, we afflict our, we, you know, we um, abstain from fleshly lusts and pleasures. That's how we afflict ourselves. We don't physically do it to ourselves, okay? And we don't insult ourselves to the point where it comes to a point of self-exalting ourselves, okay? But Micah chapter 6, verses 6 on to verse 9. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord, and how and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shewed thee, O oh man, what is good? And what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly? to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. The Lord's voice crieth unto the city, and the man of wisdom, and he said unto man, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding, Job 28, 28. And the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Hear ye the rod, and who hath appointed it? And yes, sometimes the chastisement of the Lord will come to you in a physical manner. Absolutely. But see, you're not doing it yourself. It's the Lord chastening you because you are his son or daughter. You don't have to take it upon yourself to chastise yourself in the manner that the Lord will do it. You are to judge yourself. Yes. Yes. And you are to abstain from all appearance of evil. But you're not supposed to beat up on yourself physically. Cut yourself or stuff, any of that nonsense. That's Catholic. That's Catholic. And you got to be careful about, well, I'm, I'm this, that, that, this, this, the other thing. I'm this, that. Look at how bad I am. Hence, exalting yourself. While you think you're abasing yourself. you got to be careful with that. you got to really, really be careful with that. Okay? And there are reasons to fast. There are, and there are ways. Uh, these aren't all of them. We're just going to look at a few. Uh, Morning. That's a reason for fasting, okay? Like I said, there are a lot of ones that we can go to. This is just going to be very brief, okay, about the fasting, okay? Because, and there's a, a, there are some videos I need to delete. There are some videos I need to delete because of oh, uh, crazy charismatic. But, the charismatics... You'll hear a lot about fasting from the Charismatics. Why? The Charismatics do that in a way to manipulate God. Because, hey, believe it and receive it. Hey, you want to get God's favor, you know, get the money? Start fasting. There are scriptural reasons to fast. But see, the Charismatic comes along, teaches. Joyce Meyer talks about fasting. Creflo Dollar, uh, Kenneth Doplin, um, Benny Hinn even talks about. Rick Warren even talked about fasting. Okay? But these people talk about fasting as a way to manipulate God. God forbid. But, morning. Morning. Psalm 35. Psalm 35, verses 12 on to verse 14. Here's a reason, fast. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned into my own bosom. Humbled my soul through fasting. Uh, you want to show contrition, or you are just guilt-stricken, or, or something you've done. You don't take it upon yourself physically to beat yourself. Uh, no, try fasting.
like we saw the example, okay? When you fast, you just sh shut up about it, okay? I had behaved myself as though I, he had been my friend or my brother. I bowed down heaven, heavenly as one that mourneth for his mother. Mm. So mourning is a uh, cause for fasting. And of course, Psalm 102. Psalm 102. Mourning, hence sorrow. Okay? Sorrow. Sorrow. Oh, I, there have been times before that I have been so grief stricken over my sin, yeah, that I've spent the day fasting because of my sorrow, because I have sinned against the Lord. Absolutely. 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 Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from, my, from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me in the day when I call, answer me speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as an hearth. My heart is smitten and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. Fasting. By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert. I watch and I'm as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Mine enemies reproach me all the day. And they that are mad against me are sworn against me. Oh, by the way, we have not forgotten Isaiah chapter 58. We're going to get back to that, but we're going to go down this route first, okay? We haven't forgotten. We're going to go back there and finish there, okay? Don't worry. Now, for I have eaten ashes like bread and mingled my drink with weeping because of thine indignation and thy wrath. For thou hast lifted me up and cast me down. My days are like a shadow that declineth. I am withered like grass. And that is going to be the condition for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble when those Jews who finally understand that they blew it. That's going to be the heart of the Jew during the time of Jacob's trouble. For those who come to the truth and acknowledge the truth. Okay? What a sign of mourning. And also here, Joel. Oh, oh yeah. Joel, 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 chapter 2, Joel, chapter 2, Joel, chapter 2, verses 12, on to verse 17. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. Because you're, you know, you're mourning and weeping, you have no time for food. You have no time for sustenance, only to gr be because you're grieved of what you've done unto the Lord. Yes, okay? And rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and great and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. This doesn't talk about anything about flagellating yourself, or uh, cur cursing yourself to the point where it becomes self-exaltation, okay? Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto our God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a, psalm, a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine, thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Where is their God? Yeah. Yeah. And America, Americans, can't do that today. Because our, our, our nation is so far gone. This is impossible for us to do. Individually, yes, it can be done. But as a nation, America do this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And as a means to beseech the Lord, to seek the Lord. Now see, the charismatic 
talks about fasting. But see, they do it as a means to manipulate God to get their blessing today. Uh, it's my time to find favor. It's my time to be blessed. I can't feel the presence of the Lord, and I'm going to get my blessing right now. It's my time to find favor. See, the charismatic will talk to you at length about fasting, but see, it's not a, a fasting due to... And when you fast to beseech the Lord, who is the one who's going to get the glory in the, at the end of that fasting? The Lord... Not you. And hence, the charismatic, when they preach about fasting, it is to exalt yourself, not the Lord in your affliction. Big difference. Big difference. And on that, Second Samuel. Second Samuel, chapter 12. David's child that was born to him, the first of Bathsheba, when he took her, from Uriah the Hittite and had him killed, a child of adultery. The Lord had no choice but to kill that baby. Why? Because the enemies of the Lord would blaspheme him. Okay? And don't worry, that, that child is in heaven right now doing better than most. Okay? Because it wasn't the child's fault. He was innocent. But he had to because David blasphemed. Made the Lord look bad. And if the Lord had to kept that child alive... He had no choice. He had to do that for his name's sake because he has exalted his word above his own name. So if he says something in his word, he has, he's going to keep it. Yeah. But Second Samuel chapter 12, verses 15 on to verse 17. And Nathan departed on to his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick. David therefore besought God for the child. And David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. See, his fasting wasn't for himself to get my blessing right now. No, it was for the child, for the Lord's mercy, that the Lord would be glorified. It, it was a fast other than for himself, okay? And the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth, but he would not. Neither did he eat bread with them, okay? And another one, Ezra. Ezra, chapter 8. Ezra, chapter 8. Verses 23, 21 unto verse 23. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, that we might afflict ourselves before our God. F fasting is a way of afflicting ourselves. That is the scriptural way to afflict ourselves, not beat ourselves or cuss ourselves. Okay? See, when you go to the Lord, I am a vile, w wicked sinner, you're only acknowledging to the Lord, one, that he already knows, but you're acknowledging your place as a fallen, fallen, no good, rotten sinner. You're not exalting yourself. When you go beyond that, then that starts to get into self-exaltation. Be careful with that, okay? Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, that we might afflict ourselves before our God to seek him, to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones, and for all our substance. For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way, because we had spoken unto the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him, and, but, his power, but his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. So in their fast, who got the glory? Them because they got their blessings right now? Well, yes, they did. But ultimately, who was glorified? The Lord. And these charismatics, they only they preach fasting so they can get their blessing right now, so they can have their best life right now. When you hear charismatics talk to you about fasting, run away from them. They're doing it under the pretense of covetousness. Beware. Beware. And of course, Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 4 on, not, Nes, uh, not Esther. Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 4 on to verse 11, the close of the chapter. And it came to pass. 
When I heard these words, that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days, and fasted, and prayed before the God of heaven, and said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God, that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let thine ear now be attentive, and thine eyes open, that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now day and night, for the children of Israel thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which have sinned against thee. Both I and my father's house have sinned. We have dealt very corruptly against thee, and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments, which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Remember, I beseech thee, the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if ye turn unto me, and keep my commandments, and do them, though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather them, gather them from thence, and will bring them on to the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Now these are thy servants and thy people, whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and by thy strong hand. And see, in this fasting, it wasn't for anything beneficial unto himself, even though he would ultimately benefit. It was first in beseeching the Lord that the Lord will be glorified in what was being done. Not that he would be glorified, Nehemiah himself, even though that came as a part of it. But see, the charismatic, when they talk to you about fasting, my time to get favor, my time to be blessed, it's selfish, it's sensual, it's devilish. Beware, okay? Beware. And, and some of these messianic Jews, too, with fasting, as a means to manipulate God, be careful. Be careful. O Lord, I beseech thee, let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of thy servants, who desire to fear thy name and prosper. I pray thee, thy servant, this day, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. For I was the king's cupbearer. And ultimately, what was it for? To rebuild the temple of the Lord. God's glory. See? And then, uh, some of you might be saying, well... Um, well, first, Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. Jesus didn't, you know. Jesus said about something about they can't fast while well, I'm with them. We're going to address that. But Matthew chapter 17, verses 20 under verse 21. And this was uh, when they, the disciples, the apostles and whatnot, couldn't cast out a certain devil. And why was that? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth, out, goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Interesting to note that prayer and fasting in some of the Bibles is removed in this context. Prayer and fasting. Yeah, the devil doesn't want you fasting. Appropriately. But fast to him, so he, you know, you bow down to Satan, he'll give you everything. Just fall down and worship him. But what about Mark chapter 2, when our Lord said, can, the disciples, can they fast while the bridegroom is with them? Let's look at that. Mark chapter 2, verses 18 and 20, on to verse 20. Mark chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 20. And the disciples of John and the Pharisees used to fast, and they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and, and of the Pharisees fast, but thy disciples fast not? And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber, excuse me, fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. Why did he say that? Remember the miracle of the loaves and fishes? When they said, when they were in the boat, it's like uh, they were all upset because they had forgotten to take bread. And the Lord said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they're like, oh, we're, he's talking about bread. And the Lord's like, what, why don't you get it? Don't you remember the miracle of the loaves and the fishes? What's the significance of that? Jesus Christ 
presently physically on earth, God the Father could miraculously provide for his people. During the kingdom of heaven, God's going to be on the throne. So he's going to physically, can actually physically provide for his own people, okay? Physically, out of thin air, can make bread or fish appear out of their hands as they're distributing it. Okay, you talk about a miracle. That's the significance of the loaves and the fish. Okay, what you don't understand. God the Father was on earth. And God the Father who created something out of nothing could easily provide food for his own. Okay, so when he was amongst them, why they wouldn't fast. Why? Because he was physically there present. That's why. But, verse 20, the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. But they didn't when he was there. Why? Because the king was on the earth. Hence the miracle of the loaves. See? Get it? That's why they didn't fast. Okay? Because he's right there, and he can do all things. Okay? And, of course, Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. All right. Acts chapter 13. Oh, where are you going, Brian? Right? Verses 1 on verse 3. Within this dispensation. Acts chapter 13, verses 1 on verse 3. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius and Cyrene, and Manaen, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, and the Lord is that spirit, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. And the Lord is that spirit. Okay? And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. And then, of course, you have in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5, uh, about, you know, a man and wife are to abstain from uh, coming together for a while. Why? For 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. We, we addressed this in the cold, very cold video. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. Defraud ye not one another, except it be for be with consent for a time. Defraud ye not, like a husband and wife lying together. That ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Fasting and prayer. For us today in this dispensation. Yeah. Yeah. But see... Are you fasting that the Lord may be glorified or that yourself? And there are other um, uh, examples that we can look at at appropriate fasting. Yes, there are. But see, mourning, sorrow, grief, and that the Lord may be glorified in the work that he has called you to do for his glory, that you fast, that you seek the Lord. Not that you will be glorified, because see, when the charismatic in James chapter 4, James chapter 4, the charismatic does this. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts? That war in your members ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not. Because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. But what happens when these charismatics fast and it comes to pass? Well, who's answering their prayers? Is it of the Lord or is it Satan who's answering their prayers? In the description box, there'll be a video on that. Ye adulteresses, adulterers and adulteresses, Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So these people, go back now to uh, Isaiah chapter 58. We, we did not forget about that. We did not forget about that. There was a purpose why we split that up. Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. Now let's read verse 4 again. 
Behold, ye fast for, for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voices voice to be heard on high. Verse 5. Verse 5, on to verse 7. Is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Which they were not doing. Why? Because when you fast like that, you're denying your flesh. But these people were fasting and yet finding pleasure by boasting about their fasting and saying, look at me, I, I fasted for blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? And personalize that to yourself, okay? That you lose the bands of wickedness, wicked thoughts, wicked actions. To undo the heavy burdens. Oh, that sin is a heavy burden on you, isn't it, brother or sister? And to let the oppressed go free. Are you oppressed? You've been made free from sin. What are you doing being oppressed by it? And that ye break every yoke. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Are you taking on the yoke of Satan, of the devil, by going to him? Mm. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Yeah. These are talking about actual works but for our instruction in righteousness with what we're looking at this for, okay? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. A lost person, naked, well, you know, not covered by a covering which is of his spirit, running for a cliff. Hey, stop running! You're going to run off a cliff! Showing love to our enemies. But you see, you got to remember this in Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. A lot of the times, now see, we are sinners. We're all sinners, and we sin every day, yes. And we are to mourn. Like Paul, like Paul says, Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? But very quickly, go to Romans chapter 7. And the Lord had me to do a video on Romans chapter 7, which will be in this video in the description box. Romans chapter 7, verses 24 and verse 25. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of, serve the law of God, with the flesh the law of sin. He's not justifying sin. He's saying you're going to sin no matter what. You're not to be at peace but with that, but don't kill yourself over it because your, sin, your, your soul and spirit are housed within this skin suit, the flesh, and the flesh is sinful. Okay? But what does that say? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Because in Revelation chapter 12, verses 9 and verse 11, and that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent that was in the Garden of Eden, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. The accuser of the brethren. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. And you know, one of the things that devil, devils and their ministers like to do is to bring up the past. They want to keep you in the past. They want to bring up things like errors, mistakes, or heretical things you might have once believed or preached but have repented of them. They want to bring, leave you in the past. They want to bring up the past to use it against you. And about that, you might be thinking yourself pretty slick. 
you got to remember, even though you have 150 channels, um, there are those out there that can beat you at your own game about bringing up your past. You couldn't, uh, you couldn't call doxing on all of them fast enough if you tried, even though you yourself would dox people. Yeah, yeah. Be careful there, hotshot. Think you're so smart bringing up people's pasts, right? Uh, when there's so much of your past that you don't want known. You got to be careful. There are those out there that can beat you at your own game. But see, that's what the devils do. The devils want to bring up your past. Because that's all they got. Because they have no future. But see, when it comes on to we, the church of the living God, see, the devil will use your past against you. And his ministers will dredge up things of the past. It's like, well, I repented of that. That's what I used to do. I, yeah, I did at one time teach that. But I, I've repented of that publicly. I don't, yeah, I, I make mistakes. Yeah, But see, that's what they do. And they think they're doing God's service. <laughs> yeah, they're little G God of this world, Satan. Yeah, but see, the devil's ministers will bring up your past and want to keep you in it. When in scripture, like I told you, it's a healthy thing to remember from when she came. But we don't dwell there. Satan and his ministers want you to dwell there, to keep you down, to keep you suppressed. Well, what's that the scripture? Philippians chapter 3, verses 14 on to verse 15. <clears throat> uh, actually, let's read from verses... Oh, 13 on to verse 15. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. And see, Satan and his ministers want to keep you back here. We are to press forward. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Don't stay in your past. Don't forget your past. It's, rem it's healthy to remember from whence he came. But like I said, God doesn't want to keep you there wants you to go forward. Okay? Don't forget that. Don't forget that when these scoundrel devils are attacking you left and right. Like, I remember what you used to be. I've encountered that recently. Uh, I can't believe that the guy that I'm listening to was that same guy in Crystal Lake that I used to know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what a wonderful change hath been wrought. That's going to be it for this video, brethren. This is um, late last night at around 11 o'clock my time. The Lord put this, you know, it's like, you know, the, 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 the verse, the verse that he, that came to my mind on this was about the, um, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Well, what if that's yourself? Like I said in prayer this morning to the Lord. It's like, you know, so you, you, uh, you put in one shovel full of dirt to fill up that hole that I dug. But uh, knowing me, knowing us, uh, we take two shovelfuls out to your one. <laughs> I hope this video might help some of you who might be struggling with that. Don't do as Satan would have you to do. Yes, it's to acknowledge you are a wicked sinner and you are no good. Yes, that's your, you're admitting to God what he already knows and you're acknowledging your, your thing as a lost uh, person for those of you who are lost. But you are saved of the church of the living God, you know. Uh, yeah, as a lost person, you go to the Lord broken, contrite, and in fear of him. You, you know, it's like, Lord, I, I'm, I'm no good. I'm a, I'm a rotten, lousy sinner. Please save me. That's not being prideful. And you as the church of the living God, it's like, Lord, I, 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 I'm no good. I, I, I can't do good. When I would do good, the good that I would do, I, I, I do not. But that I hate, that I do. You know? 
That's not being prideful. It's when you're like, start, well, I've done this, I've done this, I'm, oh, I'm so bad at this, I'm so bad. That leads on to self exaltation. You've got to be careful with that. It's important to remember from whence you came. But don't live here. Press forward. Because Satan wants to keep you bound there. Well, God wants you to press forward. Okay? It's going to be it for this video. Hopefully this uh, will help someone, I hope, Lord willing, and pray. Because this isn't about me. It's about the Lord. So that's going to be it. Um, please continue to keep us in uh, your prayers. We need them. Uh, my wife, we're going to go see somebody because of the infection or whatever is going on with her hip. There is something wrong there. So please keep us in your prayers. Uh, thank you to all of you who pray for us and help us. If the Lord didn't through you, we'd be destroyed. And so many of the, uh, so many of these Christians out there want to see us destroyed. So praise the Lord for those of you, Church of the Living God. So we love you. Thank you for watching this. If you do, may the Lord uh, may this be a help unto some of you, at least one. So thank you, and we'll see you in the next video. Okay.